too. I'm so excited. Look at my shirt, you guys. It is perfect. It's perfect. Them for us. us. Yay. Thank you to my friend Missy, my other friend Missy, who showed me this great shirt. I have a surprise for you. I don't have the shirt for you. I Damn wish I was. Oh, I was like, oh, is she going to give me a shirt? No, that would be open, awesome. open the door to your left. The drawer. Yes, drawer. This one. This one. Okay, it's under that. Okay, take that out. I bought you something from the same company. Show them. Oh my gosh. Wait, hold on. I have to read this to you first. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Bobby Joe. Okay, are you ready? So it's a bag, because God knows I need another one of those. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> are you ready? Jesus protected women, empowered women, honored women publicly, released the voice of women, confided in women, was funded by women, celebrated women by name, learned from women, respected women, and spoke of women as examples to follow. Our turn. Our Whoa. turn. Whoa. <laughs> Look, isn't it good? <gasps> Thanks. Oh, I love this. I can't. Ah, I love presents. I can't keep presents a secret. That was really hard for me. It was really good. Was you really did good. Fun. That was total surprise. Facebook, you saw your first yay. Oh my God, isn't my hair amazing? I can't. David. Yeah, it's so good. Did you share our our oh. that we're live? No. We're gonna we're gonna share the rest. Stacy, <gasps> you made me cry. You made me cry right before we went on, you sweet, sweet, beautiful, amazing girl, Stacy. I'm so glad you're a Facebook weirdo because I love you. How do I share it? Here, share um, it. So go, yeah, go to my thing and to share it. Um, hi, Amanda. Oh, are you down the street or are you actually at work? <laughs> Inquiring oh. minds want to know. That's Amanda, your neighbor. Hi, Amanda. I haven't met you, I don't think. You guys should meet because it's awesome. So um, I'm going to share our little live before we get going. Great. As more people are joining us, share. Also, I'll put a comment in the comment section to let you guys know where all this really awesome yes. goods come from. They actually started a business just to fundraise for helping people in poverty. And then they became a pretty successful business doing so. So they give away the profit. That is amazing. It's Amanda, you're seriously down the street right now? Like around the corner? This is awesome. Before I leave, you should come and meet the magical and amazing Amy. She's awesome. Newburgh is the place to be, people. Newburgh, Newburgh Oregon. Oregon. Newburgh, Oregon. The place to be in 2018. You can buy flowers like this. That's not, that's a plant, not a flower. Uh, a plant like that. <laughs> we have a really cool plant shop. Mm, hi, Carolee. Stacy, I'm so glad these are your favorite lives. Amanda, you're coming over here at about 1240. I'm just saying. As soon as the live's done, walk on over. You'll see my Camaro. I'm so, thank you, Amy, for my amazing Jesus and Women bag. I love it. I love so you. we're super excited you all are here today with us um, because um, we are going to talk about language. So this all started because Amy's like, what are we talking about? I, I mean, we don't plan what we're going to say, but I general theme might be good to be thoughtful about ahead of time. Right. And so we were talking about vulnerability or like times when we've had really complicated conversations with people who don't understand us. Empathy and mm -hmm. empathy and being nice, you know, <laughs> the stuff. But then we decided to talk about language because I was listening to Jen Hatmaker's podcast and one of her guests was talking about seasons. And I was like, what is it with you Christians and the word seasons? Like, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. Because I'm thinking fall, winter, spring. <laughs> but, but in the Christian dialect, that's not it. And then I said, wait a minute. Could this be the breakdown between conservatives and liberals that we actually don't use the same language at all? So she texts me and she says, Amy, what the heck? Seasons. You Christians. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I never realized that it was mostly faith-based people using a term, which is, gosh, this season of life is really hard, or it's just a season, you'll get through it. And evidently, you call BS and say, no, only you guys say that. It's cultural. It's totally a cultural thing. You sent me that text like three to four days ago. Mm -hmm. I've heard it everywhere <laughs> in my faith-based circles. I have. Yeah. And I told you there's a book in the Bible called Ecclesiastes, which is a very interesting book. The whole theme is, whoa, the world sucks. Let's just eat, drink, and work hard. I mean, it's a very fascinating book. But in it is a scripture that says there's a season for everything. There's a season for tearing down and rebuilding, a season for sorrow 
and joy. And I wondered if maybe that's I'm, I'm, how. I'm sure that must be where it came from. So the interesting part of words is sometimes season, in this example, we use seasons in this way. What word would other people use? You're going through a hard. You're going through a hard time. Hey, Denise, you're going through a hard time. Things are complicated. They're mm. rough. They're difficult. Mm. But we don't say that it, we don't like put it in a, like, in a season. <laughs> Maybe I'm like, are you using salt? Like, what's happening? <laughs> um, so um, anyway, this is where this co whole entire conversation yeah. came from. Yeah. So we decided to do, and it's ironic because my friend Kaylin, who was recently a guest on this very Facebook Live, was like, posted this thing, was so awesome, where she said, there's freedom in allowing duality and nuance and multiple truths into your life. It's not simple, and it doesn't have to be so hard. It's not simple, but it doesn't have to be so hard. Yes. So we decided to do yeah a fun little exercise. I don't know her answers, and she doesn't know mine. I don't know. Her but answers. we wanted to try try to have a genuine conversation about can we be two things that seemingly conflict, but the truth of the reality is we can be. Uh, two things that I think culture likes to, I don't know who it is and why it's there, but we say, no, you really can't do both. Right. And so we have decided to take the idea because it's fucked up Friday. So naturally we're going to mess with something to take this idea that we are either or. Mm -hmm. So we e are either liberal or we're conservative. Yeah. We're either Christian or we're, um, no. Atheist? I don't, know. I don't know what the opposite of Christian is, actually. Um, atheist, yeah. Atheist, I yeah. think, yeah. Um, e you know, either you're gay or you're straight. Like, all these binary, like, places we put each other in. All these boxes, and we're going to mess with them. Yeah, I say we mess with them. You should know that at the same time, you are inspired by K... Kaylin. Kaylin. I am friends with a gal named Jessica Honiger. She is the CEO of a jewelry company called Noonday Collection. Is that who we were talking with and on Instagram? Yes. Oh my God. I love her. No, she's great. <laughs> and she started the hashtag in a discussion and I would love if you guys joined us. The hashtag is called choosing and where we get to choose and. For example, I will start us off. Yes, up. do it. I'm going to tell you what mine is and then I'm going to tell you why. This landed on my top four or five ands. Okay. Okay. Mine is I can care about poverty in Africa and care about poverty here. Ooh. Which some of you go, sure. But I remember years ago, I was coming back from a trip in Africa and I was in customs. And they said, what was the purpose of your trip? And it was learning and it was uh, working at an orphanage. And it was a few things. And he said, don't you know there are needy people here? The customs guy? No way. Yeah, and I, you know, I've gotten sentiments of that over the years. Of, mm -hmm. There's people that need you here. Stop going elsewhere. Put your resources here. And so this one was kind of personal to me of, I can be generous here and there, and I am. You can be generous in more than one place. And we should stop judging each other for, oh, well, you're doing And I've there. done that. I've done that. I've totally been like, why are you going on a mission trip to like some foreign country when we've got all these poor people right here? What if they're doing But that? to my point about tapping into your jam and what lights you on fire, that lights you on fire. Mm -hmm. Going to Africa to address poverty makes you excited and happy. Mm -hmm. Working on poverty issues here makes me excited and happy. Mm -hmm. And since I'm a Libra, I just found the balance. <laughs> Yay! So that's an example of I can be this and be that. What is one of yours? All right, are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> because I think- I don't know if I should say, I'm gonna save the, the big whopper. I think we're gonna have an interesting discussion if this always works, the and always works. Okay, okay. So I can be a witch and be a Christian. Okay, so that's not the whammer, that's not the whopper? That's not the whopper. Oh gosh, I thought that was the whopper. No. Uh, because uh, I have always felt a power um, that like I can make magic that I'm a magical person and I can like 
cast a spell and do some stuff. And then okay, so I need I can clarity here because this is so outside my realm. Yeah. You can cast spells. Uh-huh. <laughs> I feel like that's something you tell a friend before you become friends with them. No. So I make sure never to burn this bridge ever. Why, why do you think we're friends? Do you think? Just this kidding. Totally I upside down. I don't cast um, spells on all me, of you. Just some of you. This makes me really uncomfortable. Can you tell me more? Yeah. <laughs> And I'm laughing my way through, but I'm actually yeah. feeling uncomfortable. You're feeling anxiety. Yeah. It's okay. I won't hurt you. So, but only good witch, good witch stuff. Oh. Like, not bad witch stuff. No, but I truly believe that we, as women in particular, have a power to um, bend the world to our will. Really? And I do. Okay. Because we're really good at creating community. We're really good at creating humans. Well, I'm not, but other people are. We're really good at creating life. And bringing about abundance. It's are like, witches only women? No, there are men who are witches, but I'm only surrounded by women who are. I mean, okay. I, I know male witches, but the women that I okay. am with, like in a coven, like if you were going to actually call it a coven, they're all women. Okay, but I do know men who are witches. Okay, um, is it a, something you practice? Is it daily life, or is it? Um, Lennon's watching from Guatemala. Hi, Lennon. How are you That's doing? That's pretty dang cool. That's really rad. We met like 10 years Yay. ago. Um, it's just, it's, it's all about magic and figuring out what my power is. Mm -hmm. I had someone actually say to me, um, someone who lives there in Newburgh, actually. Mm -hmm. Her name's Sarah. She's been on our Facebook lives before. Yes. But um, Sarah said to me, being around you is like simultaneously being caught on fire and drowning at the same time because you're so powerful. And I was like, thanks. I think. Um, but what I have been most afraid of in in pursuing a Christian faith is that people who um, believe in um, the more metaphysical, powerful side of me as a witch mm. will not accept me if I become a Christian. And I'm getting baptized in two weeks, just so you know. So there's she me living that, that duality. Mm. I have a hard time with this duality. Can we talk about it? Sure. I mean, I just said, yeah, we well, can be two things. And I'm like, okay, so <laughs> um, it is interesting. We are reading a book about the Bible together, and it's really good for both of us. Inspired by Rachel Held Evans. It's yeah. really good. It is good. We, I think I disagree on stuff, and, and then I'm very challenged by stuff, so it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're reading that, and what I'm recognizing is I'm okay if we disagree. Yeah. Which is I've not always been there. No, but the Christian faith, I think if you read the Bible and you believe it to be true, to whatever extent, you know, we mm -hmm. have talked about their letters of poetry, you know, what's human, what's divine. But if you believe it to be true, there's an absolute to it. Right. And so it's hard when Jesus says, I am the way, I am the only way, the truth and the life. And then you're like, also over here, I get to have power to do things, to bend things my way. It's like, I, get to I don't know if you can do, I, I don't understand how those do go together. I don't either, but I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also think there's a great historical context here, and since I'm such a history person. Yeah. So during the witch hunts in the 1400s, before those happened, um, and it was during the rising of the Christian faith, before those happened, um, women even if they were Christian, were very communal with women who had healing powers. Okay. So women were the doctors and the healers. They weren't doctors. They were healers, literally. Midwives, they were the, the medicine women and, and all of those things. And especially in, if we're talking like European countries and old England countries mm -hmm. and all that, uh, the UK and all that kind of stuff and, and European countries. And, and then the witch hunts happened because Christianity wanted to rise. And the only way to do it was to split the women. And there is a very rich narrative about how it was the very first time, I call it the ancient history mean girls, <laughs> where Christian women were actually turning women in as witches because they were either going to be burned publicly or they burn in hell forever. Because if you committed that sin, you were dying one way or you were going to burn one way or another. Okay. So anyway, there's like so much more to get yeah. into that we're never going to break into yeah. on this Facebook Live. Yeah. But there's a rich historical context for it that I am really exploring and trying to figure out. Okay, so I should also say, as we're talking, my mind's in that 
the Bible says that Jesus gives us that, that the power that God had to raise Jesus from the dead. Again, this only works if you believe that to be true. Um, but the Bible says you have that power that we are heirs of this right. kingdom. kingdom. And yep. golly, that sounds weird. But um, I'm so close to it. And then when I zoom See, out, sometimes see, it sounds so weird. Uh -huh. It's the words. Yeah. Um, and and so I, I believe in miracles. I believe in praying and believing and things happening. And I believe it's the power of God. I think maybe what makes me uncomfortable is it sounds like in witchcraft, which mm -hmm. is it's the power of you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that puts you at the deity. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe why that's it's why always I... been complicated. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if, 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 if witches are the ones who are holding the power, then what power does the church have over people? I'm not even thinking or, about church's power. People. I'm just thinking about God's power. Right. That's I can separate the two. Yeah, I know. that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah. that's where my struggle is. Yeah. All right. Woo! That's not the that's whopper. That's not the whopper. Uh, can, I, can I bring it to a different level? Can yeah. I surface Go. up to something fun? Yeah, please. I can love naughty rap music and not like cursing. <laughs> I love... Oh I love rap music. What? And I hate cursing at the same time. Nuh uh. I do. You do not. The irony of me being on your Friday F stuff up. I have shit up Friday. I don't love cursing. And what's weird is it seems to be more accepted in corporate world. And I find myself kind of reacting to foul language. I don't use it very often. And I listen to it a lot. That's hilarious. I never would have met I listened to <laughs> vulgar rap. Like two life crew. Like vulgar. Like two, two life crew? No, I don't even know who that is. Oh god. <laughs> we gotta take her back to the eighties, people. Um Stacey has a question. I, oh, I love I'm not gonna try I'm not trying to take away from your oh. rapness. Oh. Yes, Stacey, of course you're allowed to ask questions. Duh, we love questions. They make us happy. Please ask all the questions, y'all. Um, if miracles only come from God, how do you explain miracles that occur in other religions? I that don't hold up God. Yeah. Stacy, nice to meet you. You won't like my answer. Uh, I, I can't. No, I can't explain miracles that occur in other religions. To be honest, I don't know about miracles that occur in other religions. So I don't, I'm not educated on what's happened, where, who, how, why. Uh, I don't have no frame of reference. Um, Is that somewhere you'd be willing to explore and learn a little bit more about? Yeah, if you, Stacey, if you have articles or you, there's something in particular I would love to read, um, I'm going to be realistic. If it's an article, great. If it's a book, I probably don't have time to pour into it, but if you send me resources, I will genuinely read them. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. Yeah, sorry. I don't Stacey. know if I have a response to that. I don't, I don't think know. it's that she's not going to, I love how you always are like, you're not going to like my answer, but your answer is never like something that nobody Terrible. would like. Yeah. I don't. Like Stacy, you suck. No, that's no. not my answer. See, you don't suck. Answer. No. Okay. What's rap music? Rap music. I don't okay. even have anything so fun as that. Okay. I don't think. I'll, I'll like um, a bit. Oh, but here's another uh, really controversial one. Um, I can be Wonder Woman and feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. I relate to that. Yeah. And I think a lot of us relate to that. Like yeah. we're supposed to be like this magical unicorn of a person. And if we're super strong and confident and capable yeah. women, changing, making change that we can still feel like we're failing. Yeah. Is there one area in particular you feel that way in? Uh, mostly in um, all of the areas. Oh. Like they don't like, like I will feel like, and maybe it's just been recent, but I think feel like sometimes this is my season. <laughs> <laughs> Adopt it, use it. <laughs> Listen, um, in like, I feel like I have not been able to be enough or do enough in any area mm -hmm. of my life, either as a mother mm -hmm. or as a partner or as a friend or as, um, everybody's laughing at me now why or as because I said something funny about the seasons oh. um Stacy loves your answer by the way um so yes I'm enough isn't that weird no um, but I, I think we can resonate with the, the feeling of I'm just not 100% anywhere yeah yeah I'm just not thriving anywhere yeah I'm above water yeah <laughs> why do you think that it do are we taking too much on are we feeling more pressure I, I honestly wonder if it's that we have been told that we aren't, we will 
I said to one of my coaching clients actually this morning, I was like, you will probably never hear me use the word self care, the term self care, because I think it's a patriarchal holdover that's created to make us fail because none of us are ever successful. How many women do you know are like, I just wish I could engage in self care. Oh, what do you mean engage? Like, I wish I was better at it. I wish I was good oh, at it. I wish I had time. more time for it. We're never going to succeed at self-care because self-care has been created as a structure no. within which we can fail. No. Yes, that's what I think. That's, isn't that assuming I think it's such, crap. Isn't that assuming ill intent of people? Are no, I think it's assuming that women, women, there is always a structure in place with it, within which women will never be good enough. But you don't think men feel that way? I do think men feel that way, but they, that's where the patriarchy works on men, too. But they don't call it self care. How many men are you? Many. Really? Many. No. Yes. There's men who talk about self care yes. that aren't gay. Yes, this one's not gay. The one I really. Gay. Yeah, we have conversations all the time. He's in a taxi and emotional job. He's a psychologist, and I'll constantly ask him, "How's your self care? What are you doing?" He's like, "You know, self care is hard." Like we'll use that language together for him. Really? Yeah. Oh no, I, I only hear it used against women. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder. If See, again, we're getting to these cultural things that we think are universal. We all make these assumptions that these thing are, things and the are words. universal. And the important of and those the words. And the, the way we think about them. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm. Interesting. Uh, I would like to affirm you that if you feel like you're failing in all areas, you aren't. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really love you. Thank you. I love you, too. I'm enough. Okay. Did you just throw that sticker at me? I kind of did. I'm going to put I, it on my planner. Oh, good. Uh, okay, here's one. Not Here we go. Anybody. Well, what surprised me was the gangster rap, so let's move on. You know what I teach as a public speaker coach? A speaker coach? I love that you're a speaker coach. Is that stay unpredictable. you got to compete for people's attention. So once in a while, reference rap music. <laughs> I can be a good mom. Hi, and, Chrissy. Hi, Chrissy. I can be a good mom and let my kids watch lots of TV. <gasps> Yay! You Good too? job. Yeah, we don't own a TV, but they watch lots of Netflix. Oh, okay. No, that counts. <laughs> yeah, no, they watch. There is such yeah. shame in how much do you, oh gosh, I feel like this one's tender for me because my kids watch a lot of TV. They are loved. They are healthy. They are learners. They are socially responsible. They are wonderful humans and it's okay mm -hmm. that they watch. I, there's a weird shaming. There's a lot of shaming for kids watching TV. Yeah. And I get... My kids play video games, too. I have lots yeah. of shame about my kids playing video oh. games. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where there's the question of, okay, so you can be a good mom and let your kids watch a lot of TV, but are you a good mom and let your kids watch TV 10 hours a day? I don't know. See, is there like a threshold? Of I don't know. Is there a threshold for all the moms? Hi, Crit. Look, my buddy FF's on there. Look, James Thomas Kelly. Hi, honey. Oh. Um... I don't know. Is that for the? Is there? <laughs> Jackson is watching Wonder Pets while I watch this. That's awesome, Stacy. See, um, I don't. Know. I feel like there. I mean, is. I feel like ten hours is excessive. But who gets to decide? I don't what think we should be is. deciding that for other people, though. Like, it's a, in my family, that would be excessive. Well, you're a social worker, right? Sure. At work? I mean, I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a very good one. <laughs> I mean, don't you get in situations where it's excessive and too much? I think people can't, it I think it's really family dependent though. Yeah. I mean, my, I'm, when my kids watch 10 hours of TV, they like turn into little demons. I can't even imagine 10 hours. I can't either. But some people like, that's their thing. See, and the, the real um, thing is why are we like shaming people for your fam? LOL. Shut up, Kristen. <laughs> you don't know. Okay. All right. Yours. Are you ready for the doozy? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. What's I'm the really excited. Are you ready? I can be personally opposed to abortion and 100% pro-choice. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> flush, flush that out for I our love friends. breaking Amy's head explode. And for all of her friends uh, out I'm there. I'm thinking a lot uh, of other people are You're swimming. thinking of, um, um, Amanda, I'm going to get back to your comment in a second. Um, okay, so tell me, say it again. So I can be personally opposed to abortion and 100% pro-choice. 
So you're pissing off both sides. Yes, which is what I love to do, which I'm kind of enjoying it a little bit. I also. love it a lot. <laughs> I love making both sides really mad at me. Me too. See Stacey Dotson, me too. Amanda, me too. Yes. Is this a Thank thing? you. Yes. So against abortion, but pro-choice, friends. I'm personally opposed to abortion. Which is? I would never get one. What is, what is to you? You're personally opposed to? Abortion. Okay, can you rephrase that in like, not that term, but a f actual description of what that is to you? What that is to me is yeah, a, I woman want to the words. a woman terminating a pregnancy. Okay. Yeah, we would use different words on that. Especially okay. when it gets into the second trimester, I have a lot of complicated feelings about that. Okay, so you're against that. Yes, but I'm 100% pro-choice. That you can't tell a woman to do that. Because I do not believe it is my, I, it is my right as a human to tell another human being what they can and cannot do with their body. Okay, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard it here first, people. And, see what I just did, though. And, I agree. And, although I feel like no one should tell a woman what to do with her body, I believe that life is worth advocating for. And so you I see it, the, the baby, as an autonomous being from conception. Yes. Right. And in that sense... Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this today because it always comes up with us, and I, I don't want to. I love it. that it keeps coming oh, up with us because this is the I mean, conversation it's women have to keep having. I don't want to tell women what to do. I don't. I, I, I'm pro life, and I don't want to tell women what to do. I don't. I don't even think it's right. But don't you think this is the nuance that we have to start talking about? Yeah. We can't make it this rigid damn yeah. argument. Yeah. Well, the problem is. Well, there's a lot of emo there's See, a lot and Stacey just said it. Pretty much all the pro-choice women I know are the same way. So I guess the only difference between me and you is that I would plead and beg for women to choose that life. Right. Even if I feel like I shouldn't make I don't know you. if that's a big, huge difference, though. Well, I would also... Maybe, maybe it would nuance, when I mean, vote. Yeah, but maybe the nuance, Amy, is that you would beg and plead with the woman to choose that life. I would beg and plead with for the woman to have every single option open to her and know exactly what it what they are, whether it's keeping the baby or giving the baby up for adoption or having an abortion, so that she can make the decision that's in her best interest for herself. And I think where it gets complicated is for you, you want abortion off the table. I just don't want that to ever be the best option. Diana, is Diana one of your friends? That's my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Hi, Diana. She's I've amazing. met you before. She's a pastor. Um, this is She's a conversation great. that needs to happen. So glad. Yay. But this is, but I wonder if this is where the complication comes in. Because I actually have some friends who actually consider themselves to be pro-abortion. They're way to the left of that. I heard something this week that really was disgusting and I, to me. And I have a really hard time with those people too. Yeah. Like Oprah this week. Did you hear this? No. Hearsay. We should Google this. Well, Google, because it tells well, us everything. Because it's the truth. truth. Uh, there is a movement for people to boast about their abortions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The and I'm there promised. were 126 women who took uh, the pill, uh -huh. what's that called? All together in a rally, mm -hmm. aborting their babies together mm -hmm. to make a statement. Like, pro-abortion. That Let's seems a little extreme to even about me. I, I mean, like, that seems a little bit extreme to even, to like, I think it's a very private, personal decision. And if you, yeah. I mean, like, y'all, do, do your thing. Like, but I, but I feel like, I feel like it, that actually detracts from the reality of women's lives and the, the situations that they are each personally in. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes away from their autonomy. Like, to, to sort of glorify it that way, I think is also not okay. Because these are really complicated, it. difficult I think things. what's helpful is seeing that image in my mind of 126 women taking a pill together and be like, abortion rocks. Right. Stay so you're hearing, not dumb. Which is hearing what you're saying and saying, that is different. She can be pro-choice. 100%. And not agree with the kind of, let's do this. It's not so No, right? That would not be my jam. Uh, it's interesting, I think, from a lot of people, that duality didn't exist in our minds before. No, I don't think so. Yeah. 
And I think this is why we have to keep having these conversations. Yeah. I actually want to get back to okay. Amanda's comment on the video game shame because okay. is it really shame or is it just a hard thing to change about yourself mm. and family? It's so easy to feel bad about it. Um, she just asked a doctor at her kiddo's appointment last week and she told him he should limit his screen time to two hours a day. Yeah. Is two this, hours seems to be kind of the the thing. I'm not trying to detract from the abortion conversation. Oh, no, you know, I, I just know wanted to get no, because our time is limited, That's but I wanted to get to Amanda's question. But I mean this this is the the thing though. Two hours two hours is hardly enough for my kids when they're watching a movie. Like when my kiddos are watching a movie, um Yeah. You know, yeah, that, that's a couple hours there, and then yeah. they might want to watch a TV show or play some video games for a couple we, hours. We're so, beyond two hours. So yeah, here. no, yeah, so are we. Like, if they're what, playing video games and watching a movie, we've gone way beyond two hours. It's fascinating. Yeah. But the guilt, it's the guilt and the shame that we put on. Well, and guilt. You're and not a good mom if your kids are on the screen all well, the time. Well, and guilt and shame are two different things. So the yep. guilt is, I kind of, I did something wrong. I got to change something. Mm -hmm. And shame is, I did something wrong. I'm a piece of crap. Yeah, I'm a bad mom. That's two different things. So Ooh, maybe what you're tapping on, that. Amanda, is when we feel guilt as parents knowing it's probably not right, but we're being a little lazy. Mm -hmm. That's not shame in my mind. Shame mm -hmm. is when someone's saying, you're kind of a bad mom. Yeah. But then what's interesting is all, I had a friend who I love, but we don't have much in common. Uh, for other reasons, not ours, <laughs> different, whole, whole different ones. And they don't own a TV because they don't want their kid watching TV. And it's like, I feel shame, even though she's not doing it to me, mm -hmm. but I'm comparing and I'm, I'm choosing, she's not shaming me. I'm choosing to feel like I'm a bad mom because of my choice, just because I'm comparing. Yeah. That comparing game is really awful. I don't know why we waste um, time. I, uh, I think you're a great mom. No, thank Your you. girls are adorable. I do love them very um, much. I think we have time for one more each. And also, Stacey, just to say, you're not dumb. Pro-abortion is literally people who believe um, in abortion first. I think that's my take on it, but I could be wrong. And so if somebody watches this and they are pro-abortion, I would love it if you would get on and, and mm. kindly and respectfully mm. state your position um, so that people are clear and understand it because I think that's how we brought in this conversation. I have a couple others. I'll end with this one that I can believe it. I can believe the Bible and not defend it well. Ooh. But do you feel like you have to defend it a lot? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why do you feel like that? Uh, well, I think it's hard to believe. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't Hi, Sarah. Mean, if we being realistic, good golly. The Bible is a big spoon to swallow. Yeah. And so I don't blame people. I just, uh, not having a good defense does not mean you're not competent. I, or uh, that your belief is weaker. Why do you feel or... like you have to defend the Bible? What, what, what structures have been set up, especially recently, that make it so that you feel like you have to defend it. Why do you think that's so? I mean, I speculate why. Yeah, so. I think there's assumptions that when you have a faith of a something you can't see based on a book that was written by humans that you stay inspired by God with crazy stories inside it, that there's a little bit of a you can't be a critical thinker and a believer. And if I'm going to poke holes in your Bible theory and you can't defend that, mm. I proved you wrong and you shouldn't believe. And so I think there's a pressure. And maybe there's an assumption that believers are not smart, keep the critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. And just because I can't defend that one point that you made in the Bible, because I don't, I haven't studied that. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't detract from my wholehearted belief in the book itself. I also wonder if the reason you have to defend I mean, it is because it's being used for policy in a way that it actually was not meant to be used to create policy. Because I'm not sure that... I just don't see through that lens, but you do. I so, do because it's been yeah. said to me, well, the Bible says this, so we have to yeah. enact this law to do this. <laughs> like, can we get back to environmental justice for just a second? Oh, that's global a warming doesn't other, exist because the Bible, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. So anyway, I had that's more, why. I had more. I had more. Well, this hold on. Interview. No, we're not done. Hold oh. on. So Catherine Olson says, I wonder if those women will be aborting in large numbers at a rally if they weren't being shamed for considering abortion. Would be a I love. Oh, oh, I love what she's saying here, though. It's it. The word she used that I love is considering abortion, because I think a great many women that I have met who have not made that choice, it has been an, a consideration. 
but it wasn't their best decision. And so they didn't do it. Yeah. So I, I actually love how she said that. And I, I wonder that too, Catherine, like, honestly, I think this, I think we're really hitting on the complication of this conversation. Hey, there's Danielle. Um, by the way, Catherine, I'm bringing water and lemonade to dinner tonight. Nothing yeah. fancy. Maybe a bottle of wine. We're having dinner. She's yeah. a high school friend. Good. So good who's interacting. Thank you guys so much for taking out time. Stacy's got mom guilt. Real mom guilt. Oh, she man. She had a two-hour conversation about this. Yeah. Um, I had some thoughts that we can shelve, but I was curious if there are... I'm not curious. I want to tell you words on the I hear on the liberal side that I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? Just like your season of life, what is that? There's one tell particular me. there's one particular phrase. What? Wait, do we have time? Yeah, go for it. All right. I mean, who gets to tell us? I'll get I'll get back to my I'm gonna do my other end because Oh, you do you have another one? I have one more. Do it. No, oh, I I'm not. talk about I won't forget. forget. You won't forget your no. start? Swear. Okay. Hi. So um hi Sarah Hadley. There you are. There you are. Um What's your last uh, one? My last one is I can be a really amazing stepmom and a really amazing mom. Tell me about that one. So one of the things that I have experienced as a stepmother and that a great many of my friends who are stepmothers feel and are, have experienced is shaming around being a stepmother. That doesn't actually happen to stepfathers. So when mm -hmm. a woman is a stepmother... She's a whore. She's a homewrecker. She's a witch. She's a bitch. She's mm. stealing the children away for her own use. Mm. I have friends that resonate with that. So many stepmothers have this experience. And clearly we are faulty, especially if we don't have our own biological children to bring into the new marriage, mm. which I don't because I am infertile. But I am a mom. I'm a mommy. I get called mommy. I get called mama. I get called momo. I get called mom. I am a mom. And we don't do this with stepfathers. With stepfathers, they are the knight in shining armor. They're saving the single mom from single motherhood. Yeah. They are coming in and doing the, um, the harrowing deed of parenting as a man. They're a man. They've stepped into the role. Stepmothers never get that gratification unless the biological mother has died or is mm -hmm. missing completely. Damn. So a lot of people I know are like, oh, the kids are so lucky to have you. And I always say, well, I'm really lucky to have them too. But that is not the message that we send to stepmothers. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. But I am a mom, damn it. Yeah. I am their mother. Yeah, and you're good. I am good. So, there. I wonder if any other set moms can understand that. Oh, I think they can. I would love, uh, if some of you are still watching and anyone afterwards, I would love you to write in the comments what you are. I can be blank and yes. blank. I would Here, love I'm going to gonna even, I'm going to model it. I can. I, things I've heard before me. is, uh, interesting ones, like and I can lift heavy weights and be feminine. Yeah. I can be... What are the other ones? I can be gay and Republican. I can be, I mean, I've heard some really important. I can be married to a man and be a bisexual. Which you've gotten heat for. I get heat for it all the time. See? Um, you can be young and capable. Yes. You can be divorced and friends with your ex. You can make it work. Yeah. That's not everyone's story, but it might be yours. Yeah. You can choose not to have children and still be a complete woman. Oh, really? Huh. So write down what you would. Yeah, claim. I would love that in some of these comments. I would really, 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 really love that a lot. Okay, here's the here's the liberal worlds. I don't words. I don't. Care. Oh yes, liberal words. Um, you it don't might get. be hard for you. I just I no go. I don't, okay. I don't get the future is female. Oh really? Yeah, I saw a shirt on Instagram a few different times, uh -huh. and it said the future is female and male, and I thought, right. What is that other slang? I think that um, the origination of, um, oh, Danielle added one. I can be, oh, Stacy did too. I can be a good mom and not have my kids be the center of my universe. Yes. Danielle says I can make a huge impactful change and make money doing it. Yes. 
Yes! You mean we can be rich and change the oh, world? guys. Yeah! Like, you all got to comment. These are, these yeah, gifts, these, you yeah, know what these keep do? Keep commenting. This evokes social permission. Yes! Uh, a collective, a collective permission. Yes. When we hear this and we read it and we get to claim it, there's yes. power in that. So I want to say that the future is female came about during the, the feminist revolution of the 1960s. Okay. And it was really a, um, I love what you just said about social permission. It's so good. Oh, it is. Um, mm. uh, it is. It was used as a term to empower women to lift them up so they could actually see their future. Because if you think about it in the historical context of when people started saying the future is female, what were women doing in the 50s? Making bread. Mm -hmm. Staying home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they, in the 40s, they were working because all the men were off yeah. the war. In the 50s, they were homemaking because yeah. all the men were back from war. Yeah. And so in the 60s, they were like, the future is female. We can do anything we want. Oh. Okay, so, so it, the context, it may not be historically relevant now because the future is everybody. Well, right, and the okay. and I think that the bad part about feminism is what it doesn't help people see is that it doesn't just lift up women; it lifts up everybody. Because again, we've put feminism, and you just used to say this before you outed yourself as a feminist. You were like putting them in a box; those crazy, like bra burning liberal, yeah. you know, lesbians. Like, you know, doing like, the feminist yeah. thing. And, but, but maybe the connotation doesn't stick anymore. Sure, the future is female, but the future is everybody. I mean, the future is, yeah. if we don't get this shit together and start having conversations, yeah. we're going to be in big, huge trouble. Yeah. Well, and I think the, I guess the bigger question in the evokes is, are men the enemy or the ally? Because well, men are always the ally. We go together. Yeah. We, we can't not go together. Right. We need each other. We even need each other. Right? right? Do we do? But do you yeah, believe that? We, yeah, of course I believe that. You're like down with the patriarchy, men. I'm down with the patriarchy. I'm not down with men. I love men. Oh, but where's the okay? This Hello. Is the next. I went back to the. I went back to men after being with women I know, for that's twelve true. years. I'm bisexual. <laughs> of course, we need men. Okay. Yeah, certain men, not certain men. I'm, I I guess I'm so I'm not by the patriarchy. Mate, wait, that's another. You know what? Patriarchy. We're going to do another Facebook Live and talk about the patriarchy. Um, hi, Stephanie. Stephanie's oh, right. Hi, Steph. Uh, Danielle Savory can be a mindfulness teacher and cuss like a sailor. Stacy, uh, Danielle lives in Portland. I'll connect the two of you. You should be friends. Um, like, clearly. Um, is Rebecca one of your friends? Is she one of your people? Maybe. I, I can't see her Maybe. picture. Okay. Um, so we would really love it if all y'all, Danielle Savory can cuss like a sailor. No shit. Um, I can fill in the blank. I can be Christian and an LGBTQ ally. Yes, you can. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, that is for sure. Um, this has been super duper fun. I hope the comments keep coming and I hope people yes, keep, keep up with this conversation because we really want to stop this stigma of the isolating language and really start. Listen, y'all, liberals, start calling the Christian people you know and be like, what the hell is this season? <laughs> I don't understand that shit at all. You know what? Or being in the wilderness. Like, I'm like, are you going camping? Where are you going? Shut up. I'm serious. The wilderness just means like And you're dark. like, what the hell is wrong? What well, the future is female. I'm like, well, that's a historical context from a movement. Like, yeah. It okay. may not be relevant Words anymore. are important. I Words are important. I know there are some men who watch this. Probably not the majority. But I think there are a lot of fans that men yes. need a voice to, yes. that you can be masculine and sensitive or man and feminine. Yes. I would just love to hear from men. I would too. And if you're going to post this, if you're inspired and you want other people to get that collective permission, uh, the hashtag is choosing and where you are choosing and yes. to, accept, choosing duality, and. to yes. accept the messy, complicated middle that no one, maybe you feel like no one validates. We're I here love for it. you, friend. Danielle Savory, we love your face so much, both of us, because you're the reason we got together in the first place. Um, ooh, look at Catherine. I can be anti-patriarchy and not anti-men. See? Things I've learned. The bomb that I did not drop is that whole pro-life and feminist, which is causing problems for me, let me tell you. I love that she's dropping the pro-life feminist bomb. Oh, man, it's causing lots of problems with strangers. So good. Not people who know me, <laughs> but with strangers. I can be pro-Second Amendment and pro-social justice. Yes, Sarah! 
Yes. I, I guess, can just sit here and read we these. Could totally, I, just, I love that Stacey's like, gosh, this is so good. I know. Sarah Hadley, I'm with you on the Second Amendment because I love my guns too. They make me happy. Listen, I know. We can I go that. on and on, but it's already like almost Guys, 1 o'clock. Love y'all. Love you so much. Thanks for being here. Ooh, one more. Stephanie Bell Finley, your neighbor. I can be a Harry housewife and a city councilor. Yay, Stephanie for city council. Woo! Love you guys. Remember, Bye. we're in this together. We're in this together. We love you. Goodbye.